Hello everyone, I am Alka1093 and welcome to a top 10 video. I've made a lot of Battle Revolution videos over the past few years and they're doing super well. I'm really excited, especially with the growth that it's seen recently. So I thought, why not bring back top 10s with the top 10 PBR video. Here's the top 10 Colosseums in Pokemon Battle Revolution. Now remember that this is my opinion, so your opinion can be very different. My least favorite could be your favorite. Also, there's 11 Colosseums. I'm not going to count Lagoon Colosseum for this one, because that's only available in Wi-Fi battles and maybe in DS Wireless, I don't remember. But it doesn't have its own Colosseum challenge, and it's not even available in free battle, so unless I can get Wi-Fi battles working again, you're not going to see Lagoon Coliseum in my videos, and that's why I'm not counting them with this video. So just the base 10 are what you're going to see. Number 10. Courtyard Coliseum. Playing through the game, base game, Courtyard Coliseum is the penultimate Coliseum you go for. During that first run through, it is just a standard 7 battles knockout um, challenge similar to Main Street similar to how um, there was one other one that had it too I don't quite remember anyway it's a standard fight seven people no other gimmick really the gimmick comes in in post game if you even want to call it that it becomes the survival battle your pit of a hundred trials your hundred fight challenge hundred fights you have to try and win in a row for huge rewards. Now that by itself is a really cool idea and if it was just that I would probably put it a little higher on this list. However, the, the music is pretty cool, design's cool, and I like the 100 battle challenge. Sure it takes a long time but that's the point, it's the 100 fight challenge. Do I like the heal in between? Like, the way you heal in between, you have to use the wheel, and it's, it's meant to be a bit random. I think it's good that you can sort of aim, like, in Neon Colosseum, if you know how fast the wheel goes. But, that Cresselia, like, seriously, double team, toxic something, Cresselia, if you do that, you meet that one many times in level 50, and it's annoying. So please take, like, a Hail Pokemon or a Blizzard or something with Feint Attack, because that thing is really annoying to deal with. Anyway. Courtyard Coliseum is number 10 for one reason. The weather. There are four types of main weather. You have sun, rain, hail, and sandstorm. But there's a fifth one in Gen 4. Fog. Something you need to move defog for to get rid of. And for some reason, Courtyard Coliseum has it sometimes. It's like, I don't know, like a 75% chance, 75% chance. I don't know how often, like the exact chance of it. Yeah, will have more fights without it than with it. But it drops your accuracy to something like 60%. Something that should hit normally, like your Surf, Thunderbolt, Earthquake, is less accurate than Focus Blast. And Focus Blast is known as Focus Miss to many people, because it misses so often. It becomes way too much of a luck-based game and just can just get super, super frustrating. And that weather is the main reason why Cordial Coliseum is a number 10. So that is also why the, one of the teams I'm building right now has a Pokemon that summons weather at the lead of the party. So that if there's fog, I immediately get rid of it with something like Drizzle or Sandstream. Yeah, that fog ruins Cordial Coliseum for me. I'll do it occasionally, but uh, yeah, the fog's super annoying. Number nine, Crystal Coliseum. Crystal Coliseum has some nice music, and the cave looks very pretty. The main gripe I have with it is gripe even a word? I don't know, I feel like it fits in this division. The main problem I have with Crystal Coliseum is it tries to be a gimmick, but in practice it isn't really. Like, your Main Street Coliseum, which will come up later because it's higher ranked, is your basic fight seven times. Coliseum. And that's it, and it's not meant to be anything else. Crystal Coliseum presents itself as a gimmick to that. It is a 16 person tournament, which effectively means assuming you win everything, you have five fights instead of the seven in the standard Main Street Coliseum. Now in, on paper, it's really cool that it's a 16 man, 16 woman, 16 person tournament. 
And then you have the final fight against Fuldor. In practice, though, it's really just Main Street Coliseum with five battles. Because you're never going to see any of the ones you don't fight. So in a way, I appreciate it for being a shorter Coliseum. So if I only have, don't have much time to get a recording out, I might do it that. Like, I might go for Crystal Coliseum instead of Main Street. But it, it on paper, it's a lot better than it is in practice. So that's why Crystal Coliseum is number nine. On number 8, I have Sunny Park Coliseum, the Little Battle Coliseum led by Sashay. I really like Little Battles, and to give your little Pokemon, your Cyndaquils, your Paris, your Cranidos, your Abra a chance to fight, because you don't see them too often in the other Coliseums, is something really good and really awesome. And you have single and double battle challenges. Now there's only 4 difficulty ranks instead of um, 8, like in most other Coliseums. But in a way, it makes sense because there's a lot less Pokemon available in Little Cup than there are in the other Colosseums, where in early ones you might have middle stage evolutions like your Grottle, your Charmeleon, your Shellgon, and then later on you get the evolved stuff. You get your Salamence, you get your Garchomp, you even get legendaries like Regirock and Giratina, depending on if you're doing level 30 open or level 50 all. But... Like, I understand that the first two ranks in Sunny Park Coliseum are relatively easy, like you might see your Caterpie, your Weedle, and that even something that can know Flamethrower might only know Ember. I understand that. But on the highest rank of the only Little Cup challenge in the game, I don't want to see a Pokemon that can learn Slash, Body Slam, and Return, just no Scratch. I don't want to see a Staryu that can learn Surf and Hydro Pump use Water Gun. That happens sometimes. Now, sure, there's Drifloon with Shadow Ball. I'm pretty sure Mime Jr. can get Psychic. But too often, are there moves that they should just not have? Sure, they can be a little gimmicky and certain moves you don't see often, like Confide. Is Confide even a thing in Gen 4? I think so. Anyway, like, move... So you don't really see too often, but it could be used situationally. But if you can learn Surf, use it over Water Gun, at least in the single battles. If you can learn Flamethrower, use it over Ember. Well, that's the main gripe I have with Sunny Park Coliseum. The challenge isn't high enough. Yeah, you can still lose and the opponents can still have good battles. But some, it just feels weird, to, even on the only difficulty setting, because there's no level 30 open where like, a lot of the moves are random. So it makes sense that we're level 50 all where it's more consistent. It, they just don't have the best moves in the highest difficulty setting. And I don't like that. So that's why Sunny Park Coliseum is at 8. For number 7. Well, we're going to skip number 7 because we have a tie that I'm just going to put at number 6 and I couldn't decide between them. For number 6 we have both Gateway Coliseum and Sunset Coliseum. Which happen to be the two Coliseums that... You can't use your own Pokemon in. Gateway Coliseum is the first one you start in. Main game starts as a knockout challenge. That was the one I was looking for earlier. But then changes into... Actually, no, it, it's not. Because it's a rental battle. And then it becomes a trade battle. I like that. You can take your opponent's Pokemon. But it's really hard to get into the higher rank, ranks above 5. It's a bit hard to break into rank 5. But it takes a lot of time. Potentially a lot of luck to even get higher than that. And sure, like, I've been able to get to like Battle 4 or 5, maybe even 6 in Rank 5, but then I lose at Battle 6 or 7, and I have to restart it anyway. And it's... I feel like a bit too difficult to get to the high ranks, but it makes sense because the difficulty does keep getting higher. I do like and appreciate the challenge, so that's why I play Gateway Coliseum sometimes. Sunset Coliseum is the other one, and something really unique is that both you and your opponents select from the same set of Pokémon, which also means that, let's say, both choose Vigoroth, you can have Vigoroth versus Vigoroth. And I think that's something really cool. You can have the Pokemon face each other. A lot of things to think about, because you can know exactly what moves the opponent has, what item they have. The potential of them having a camera up to make sure you have, let's say, a Pokemon with, I don't know, Water Gun or Surf. Just to deal with it. I think that is a pretty cool concept. Fifth is Neon Coliseum. A Colosseum where you could beat the entire thing by never using your own Pokemon. And also the only Colosseum where your own Pokemon could be your opponents. 
because it's a random win. Now, sure, just like in Courtyard Coliseum Survival Battle, you can sort of control what you land on. Um, but I like the idea of being able to use both your own and your opposing Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon, and then having to adjust your strategy to what you get. And assuming you're using the aiming strategy while the wheel is spinning, let's say you see the opponent use they get a Rose Raid as their first Pokemon, then maybe you want to get uh, the Flareon or the Swellow that o that's also on one of the two teams to counter that Grass type. So that is another way you can use Neon Colosseum. On number four, we have Main Street Coliseum, the basic standard Coliseum. It's not a gimmick, it doesn't present itself as such. Standard, seven battles in a row, and then you've beaten it. I think seven battles are really good amounts. They have it in Battle Tower as well, and like Emerald and Platinum. They're standard, seven, uh, seven fights in the Coliseum, and then you beat it. Music is nice. I think it's really bright and pretty. Uh, the way the Colosseum looks, so that's why Main Street Colosseum is fourth. And now the top three, the ones I really like. And a number three, which might surprise you if you've heard me talk about it before, is Waterfall Colosseum. If I would be a Frontier Brain, like in, in the Battle Frontier, like I have an Emerald, Platinum, Horcruxal or Silver, I would make my f battle facility work like Waterfall Colosseum. It's such a unique way to play. Um, it removes certain moves from usage, like spikes, like Whirlwind. You might see a bit more of Focus Ash with Counter or Mirror Coat. Pokemon cannot rely on switching. You don't switch out your Gyarados and send in a Rhyperior because you expect an opponent to use Thunderbolt. A Pokemon has to fight on its own, which I think is really cool. It's really unique. And that is what I would make my battle facility if I was in charge of one. My number two is Magma Coliseum. The Coliseum where, potentially, you win all your fights, but you don't make it to the final challenge. Or, it's also the only Coliseum where you could lose and still make it to the final challenge. That's something I really like, is that you can make up for a loss and potentially still make it really far. I think if there was a real-life Pokemon Battle tournament, and I would run one again, Using it in a similar style to Magma Coliseum is something I would try and do. I really like that concept where the amount of Pokemon you have remaining matter for the end score. Because normally it's just you go for certainty and you might have one Pokemon remaining, but it's the safe way to go. Or do you risk it and maybe have two remaining, but it also means more damage to you and then it's higher risk of having none remaining and actually lose. I think that's really cool and if I would do another re uh, like real life or online Pokemon tournament, Magma Colosseum's way to do it is what I would want to do, probably. And finally, the number one, Stargazer Colosseum. The end all, it's just very grand, it looks great, it's like the setting for a final battle. The fact you see the Colosseum leaders in your first run through of it, and the Colosseum masters at the end of the masters battle. Set challenges against gravity teams, against hail teams, against teams that use a bunch of earthquake and discharge moves that hit everyone. I think that set challenge that really asks you for effort value trading, especially the later sets, to have a chance, is an amazing challenge for me. I like challenging myself. It's only four battles, but in a way it's a good four battles, because it takes a lot more strategy and it's a lot more difficult than most other challenges you have in this game. Stargazer Coliseum is the final one. I like my competitiveness. I like my training. I like my challenges. Stargazer Coliseum gives me exactly that. That was my top 10 Pokemon Battle Revolution Coliseums. Please let me know in the comments if you agree with my list. Um, or if you would have a completely different list. Like what would your top 3 be and why? Why do you maybe dislike Waterfall Coliseum? Or why maybe would you put Crystal or Cordial Coliseum at the top of your list? Please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you always remember that you are worth it. Goodbye.